Good morning, students. I am Mr. Boscherini. And for our unit on forces and motion, today's lesson will be about free fall. What do we mean when we talk about free fall? Free fall investigates an age-old question about falling objects. Specifically, the question is whether heavier objects will fall faster than lighter ones. Now, everyday experiences tell the, tells us that actually this is true. A heavier object will always fall faster than a lighter one. But we also know that shape matters. So, how we can actually answer this question? Back in, in 1600, um, a scientist, an Italian scientist named Galileo Galilei, came out with a different idea. He thought that it was all the fault of air resistance, and if we take away air resistance, we can actually conclude that every object if dropped at the same time will fall together, will fall, as we say, with the same acceleration. Allegedly, he tried, he tested his hypothesis by climbing on top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and dropping uh, cannonballs of different sizes and weight. We know that he actually didn't carry this experiment except in his thoughts, but still is a very good example of how uh, Galileo linked his hypothesis to experiments. If we want to have an actual demonstration of the truth of what Galileo said, we had to wait until 1971 when astronaut Dave Scott went on the moon and tested Galileo's hypothesis. If you want to see the outcome, just follow this link. By now, we know that if we neglect uh, the effect of air resistance, any object, despite its weight or shape, or in general its composition, if dropped together will fall, not at the same time, not necessarily, not with the same speed. What, what is more important, they will all fall with the same acceleration. And we call that the acceleration of free fall or the acceleration of gravity. And as the name says, it depends on the gravity force field. So it depends on which part of the planet, on which planet you are. And on Earth, the value of G is measured as 9.80665 meters per second squared. Now, for practical purposes, we're going to round up that number to 10, which is a very easy number to use in our calculations. And let's see how we can use this number to find out the speed and the distance traveled by an object which is falling under the effect of gravity. First of all, let's look at speed. The acceleration of gravity is a constant, so we have an object which is moving at a constant acceleration. So that means the speed is increasing at a constant rate. And we know already that in that case, the speed is given by uh, the product between the acceleration, in this case we call it g, because g is the acceleration of gravity, times the time. Now on Earth, we can simply write that speed is equal to 10 times, because 10 is the approximated value of g, times the time. So very easy to find out the speed. In the same way, we can find out that the distance is equal to one half times the acceleration of gravity times the time squared. Now, since g is equal to 10, one half of 10 is 5. So again, we can write the distance as 5 times the time to the power of 2. And how did I come out with this uh, equation? We have to go back to when we saw uh, speed time graphs. The speed time graph for a falling object in free fall looks like this. Here we have the speed, 
Here we have the time and here we have a straight line. A straight line in a speed time graph means a constant acceleration. But we also know that in a speed time graph the distance traveled is numerically equal to the area under the graph. And in this specific case the graph is a triangle. And we know that the area triangle is one half times base times height. So one half times V times T. But V is G times T. So this is one half times G times T times T again. Which is exactly this. One half G times T squared. So let's use this, the, these numbers, let's use this equation. We saw uh, the video of Felix Baumgartner's um, jump from the edge of space. Now we can actually analyze his motion as he was falling from the upper edges of the atmosphere. So when Felix left its capsule, let's assume that, okay, that will be our time equals zero seconds. Look as as I neglected in this case to write the units, we will assume his, his initial speed was zero and the distance from the capsule will be equal to zero. After one second, the speed will be 10 times 1, which makes 10 meters per second, and the distance traveled is one half uh, times g, so 5 times t squared. 1 squared is 1, so that makes 5 meters. As we go down in the falling of uh, Felix Baumgartner, we can see that after 10 seconds he has already uh, reached a speed of 100 meters per second, that is, if we completely neg neglect air friction, and he has traveled a distance of 500 meters, half a kilometer. We go down still, and finally, after 34 seconds, but that is only if we completely neglect air resistance and if we assume g equal 10, he would have reached a speed of 340 meters per second, that is, the speed of sound, and in the meantime, he has traveled almost 6 kilometers from the initial drop-off point. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what factors are affecting the acceleration of an object falling under the effect of gravity. In the next lessons, we're going to see what is a force and we're going to investigate the three laws of motion formulated by Sir Isaac Newton. And obviously, we're going to start with the first law.